Hello everyone, it's James O'Keefe here at Project Veritas. We've got a lot of things going on, a huge investigation that's going to be coming out in the coming weeks. But I just want to tell you something. We were mentioned at the Presidential Advisory Commission on Election Integrity. This is Secretary of State Bill Gardner here. And watch what he says about our voter fraud investigations of 2012. Would those instructions on that video be consistent with New Hampshire law or instructions by election officials or were those inconsistent? When I did see that film, and when I saw it, I was just, you know, here, here's the problem. And that's why the legislature is really trying to fix this. That I'm not sure that there's any other state in the country that has this specific kind of issue that we have. So just to get you up to speed here, in 2016, we went around to polling locations and showed that out-of-state voters and people without domicile, people who are non-residents, can vote in the state of New Hampshire, and they were offered the opportunity to vote. This comes on the heels just a few days ago. It, it, it was made public that there are thousands of people who are not residents of New Hampshire who were voting. Uh -huh. How long do I have to stay in New Hampshire to vote today? Um, there's no requirement. <laughs> you want to vote today, you might tell them that you're with your friend and you're here indefinitely, which okay. is, sounds like it's true. Yeah, okay, um, gotcha. And if, yeah, it's not a hundred percent true, but I right, understand. But yeah. You're here indefinitely, and you're you're you have your address at your friend's house. Okay. And then you'd be able to vote. And who do I have had to be in in New Hampshire to vote today? Probably forty eight hours. Forty eight hours. Okay. How long do I have to like stay in New Hampshire to vote today? If you're here today, you vote. You can be gone. So after our investigation was released. We did get front page headlines, and in these front page headlines, which made the Concord Monitor and the Union Leader, I'm assuming you've never seen these, but the Attorney General of New Hampshire said in February 2016, quote, we're going to be looking at it from all angles, and there is some conduct we may need to follow up on. And he was saying that some people may have broken the law. Now, what did this Attorney General do, who works with the Secretary of State of New Hampshire? He actually sent us three threatening letters. And in these letters, the Attorney General said, you must cooperate with us and hand over all your footage. Of course, we don't want to do that because we're journalists. They probably don't consider us journalists. And after these three threatening letters, we actually paid a visit to Bill Gardner. Here's what actually happened. We got these three threatening letters and we got a criminal grand jury subpoena served on us by this guy who works in the Attorney General's office, threatening us. Now, suddenly, it's a problem. By the way, we feel vindicated. We feel a sense of gratification because now it's come out that <laughs> what we did is true, and you have him on record saying it, but there is an ironic silver lining. We actually framed these letters, and I want to show you in our office what we do. Follow me. This is from 2016. These are the three letters uh, from the Attorney General, Steve Labonte, Letter number one, this letter serves as formal notice to preserve all footage filmed. Letter number two, please cooperate with our investigation. Letter number three, we're asking that you cooperate. The insinuation being that we, the journalists, are, quote, not cooperating because we're not turning over our notebooks and hard drives. I mean, this is, this is what we go through as investigative journalists. Stay tuned. There's a lot more voter fraud developments to come.